And good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you all today? Lovely to see you. How are things out there in soon to be ex COVID land? That's not COVID, that's an ex COVID. Yes, it is. How are you guys? Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Nice to see you too. How, are, how is everyone? Everybody well? Good, good, good. Hope all is well. Now, you, you know, we were talking about self-taping the other day, and we were talking about the importance of sound. You can probably hear this, my great big blue Yeti here. My blue Yeti coming in, yes, the sound and all of that. And what we also have here today, light. Tell me, what do you think? See, this is with no light whatsoever. Good morning, Andrea. How lovely to see you. How are you? This is with no light. Now we're going to add a little bit of light. What's that like? Is that too bright? What do you think of that? Is that better? <laughs> I just got this new thing here and now I'm going to put it on. Now that's on warm. This is a, what do you call it? A ring light. That sits on tungsten. That's a little bit of warmth and tungsten. And that's just the warmth. Which do you prefer? What would you say? Good morning, Sean. How you doing? The sun is shining. The cows are milking. I'm <laughs> glad it's not the other way around. The sun is milking and the cows are shining. That reminds me of a line of Samuel Beckett's. Oh my God. What was it from? A wonderful, wonderful book of his, which starts off, The sun shone, having no alternative, on the nothing new. <laughs> Always an optimist. So how do you like? Prefer that? That look okay? That look good? So that's my little ring light. That's something I'm starting to experiment with, okay? So let's talk about that. How are you all this morning? How is everybody out there? Warm and tungsten. Let's go with warm. Oh, warm and tungsten. Okay, let's go with that. So that's, there, yeah, that's warm and tungsten. Great. Thank you. So guys, what we're going to do today, first of all, I want to start talking about is this, uh, because it went so well last week, you know, I had that we talked about, good morning, Katie Sheridan. Ah, and Emily as well. How lovely to see you guys. Fantastic. Katie, how are you? Katie, Katie Sheridan, la, la, la. So that's all great. And Emily Omani has, well, now, Emily, I have to make a confession. I've started watching Before We Die. I cannot put it down. It's great. My wife and I watch it every single night. Have any of you seen it? If not... Follow Emily Omani and listen to her. She's, it's a really, really good series. And it's a Swedish series and it's very unusual. Good morning, Eamon. How are you? Good to see you. So that's a, a, a first kind of recommendation. And well done, Emily, for that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this, um, you know, how we took things that were um, sort of negative, you know, and how we sort of made something change, how we managed to make that uh, a, a different thing. Um, my dogs are going crazy again. I'm just going to have to send a text to my daughter. I don't know what she's doing here. That's it. Anyway, hold on for a sec. Um, excuse me. Sorry a minute, guys. This is just the dogs are going. I think they're running outside. Doggies? <laughs> you can probably hear them. Maybe it's not as bad as it is for me. Anyway. Um, so that's what I want to do is talking about that. So we talked about last week where we would take one thing that something that was ne negative, right? And then what we would do is we'd add music to the background of it. Yeah. And w the way that that worked, ah, put the light at a slight angle does not reflect in your glasses. You see, this is so useful when you have, now is that too... Put a slight, not quite so straight on. Is that better? No, that's worse, isn't it? Anyway, I'll experiment with that. We'll figure that one out. That's not too bad. There you go. Okay, so anyway, thanks, guys. Thanks for that. I'll figure that one out better. Um, so we talked about how you could take a negative experience and you could make it into something different. So let's say that we had, for example, you know, a bad audition or something like that. And what we were going to do was you were going to take the image or take the picture. And this can work for any experience, whatever it is. And then we put the music underneath it. You probably remember that. Everybody remember that one? Okay. Good stuff. So what, this is another one. So choose something else. Choose another experience that you might have found that was 
difficult, a problem situation, something that was awkward, let's say it was a bad audition or an awkward self-taping moment or maybe, you know, you spilt tea all over yourself in the middle of an audition like somebody I know. Oh, yes, it was me. And, um, you know, that kind of thing. Those sort of things can happen really, really well. Uh, and uh, this is why you need, this is why you need, you know, actors, we need assistance, you see. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too bright for me. Right. So that's what we want to be doing, right? And so let's take an experience now. This, is, this can be something even weirder, something stranger, something a little harsher. And take this experience now, something that was really awkward for you, something that was painful, something that was difficult. Okay. And when you've got that problem, that's the first thing you want to do is imagine that you can see yourself in a snapshot of it. So you're literally like you're watching a movie of it. Has everybody got something? Have you found something? It's not hard and you know it's not. Okay. Choose an image. Just let me know that you have an image. There's something like that, a snapshot of that particular experience that was negative in some way. When you did something difficult, you forgot your lines, you dried, you, you broke down in tears, whatever it was that happened, something that was difficult or awkward for you in that situation. Does everybody have one? Yes, just let me know that you have one. Just give me a quick yes, I have, or no, I haven't. We'll take that one on. Okay, just give me a quick, type it in there, very quick. Okay, I'm going to assume that you have. So assume you have one, because everybody I know does have these things. So let's assume that we have that. Katie's got one. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Look at that. Straight in there. Yes, Katie Sheridan. Okay, so when you've got this image, okay, something that's really kind of negative in that sort of a way, I want you to see the movie in it, and I want you to just watch the movie of it happening and then stop the movie at one snapshot. One snapshot. Just one moment, okay? One particular moment that you have. The one moment that sort of sums the whole thing up, yeah? The one thing that sums the whole thing up. I'm going to move this light around here now. Put that there. How's that? Is that better? Oh, I'm getting all reflections. I'm obsessed by reflections now. Okay, I'm going to turn it off for a sec. It's giving me nuts. Okay, I'm going to sort that out later. So when you've got this image, right, you've got this particular image that you have there. Okay, I want you to just, if you can't quite see it very clearly, I want you to pull back and make sure you can see yourself in that image, that one snapshot of that particular thing that sums up the entire negative experience that you were going for. Okay, now what I want you to do is take a picture frame and put a picture frame around it. Now you might spend a little time choosing the picture frame. It might be a square picture frame. It might be a circular picture frame. It might be an oval picture frame. It might be something specific to you. But choose the frame to go around it. And when it might have, you know, details on it, it might be a wooden ebony one. It might be whatever it is for you specifically. Take that image and then put a little museum light over it. And just let that kind of hold it up there like that. Okay, you can now turn this image into something like a like a Picasso or maybe a Rembrandt or a Renoir. You can add all kinds of details to that little moment. And notice what happens when you focus on that now, as it's this still moment in time, the snapshot. Notice how your feelings are in relation to that. And just let me know in the comments below what your experience was. Okay? And for those of you who might be thinking, as I am now thinking, of course what I could do if this was something really difficult, I could do, let's actually, let's do something else. First of all, yeah, let me know what was that like? What was that like? Did it work for you guys? Okay? You see, what this will do is it will code, Andrea says yes, absolutely. This will code your brain to think in completely different ways. So when you start to code negative experiences in this way as still, dull in some way, what happens is they lose their power. And as they lose their power, you can start to move in different ways and you can start to make different choices. And those old things that you used to have will no longer trouble you because your brain won't be searching for them anymore, because your brain will be searching for things that are exciting and interesting, as opposed to dull and boring.
And that's what we're doing. We're turning these into dull and boring so that they become less interested. I felt like the bad feeling was being pulled out of me. Excellent. It paused it. Absolutely. Okay, what else? if it paused it, let's have it pausing it. Let's pause the image. Take that and stop that there. And now let's add some music to play underneath it. Or play Tears for Fears. Or play Adele. Or something else underneath it. Just see what happens when you do that underneath it. You felt like you were observing it rather than feeling it all over again. Exactly. Notice the languaging of that. Absolutely notice the languaging of that. I felt like I was observing it, disassociation, rather than feeling it all the time, association. Right? Remember we talked about that? So when you're observing something, what you want to do is you want to make all your negative experiences dissociated. Then you won't connect to them. Pretty simple, huh? Now, I have to say, when I first started doing this, Katie says it distances it. Excellent. Absolutely. Again, you know, the whole idea of distancing it, right? Literally, when we, and we'll, move, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, that moves the negative experience away from you. When you move the negative experience away from you, what happens is it loses its power. This is big stuff, guys. Melissa says it was calming. I found myself being curious. Exactly. It's calming. And that, that thing is just moving away now. And you think, what was that? Totally changed your entire outlook. Moving from disassociation to, uh, sorry, moving from association to disassociation. So whenever you're experiencing it, are you beginning to see how the association and disassociation are really, really important? See, when you're in an audition room, you want to be associated, right? You want to be in the moment. You want to be feeling it. If you're disassociated, you're not quite fully present, okay? When you're in an audition or self-taping or acting on stage, you want to be associated in the moment, connecting with the people that you're working with. But when you're working on goal setting, what you want to do is, as we're going to be moving into now, is start setting the goals out in the future, which we're going to call them as dissociated pictures because the association is really only in, pre in, the, in the present. When we disassociate ourselves from those goals, when we see them out there on the movies, you know, we were talking about the goals last week, and you see yourself working with Matt Damon or whatever it was, that thing that you chose, you know, you can see that. Then you'll start to make that compelling and bring that towards you. And that's what we're going to be doing a little bit more of today. Okay. So, you can also try this, guys, with something, anything that's really, really shocking. If you had an absolutely, what is, oh, Dave said something. What's that, Dave? Dave was just about to start the audition with chewing gum in my mouth, took it out and looked for a bin. <laughs> he couldn't find one and put the gum back in my pocket. <laughs> right. They must have thought, what the fuck? Yeah. Or they might have said, Dave Lee. Chewing gum for me, please. Yeah? That's exactly the kind of thing, though, right? That's exactly the kind of those moments. And I'm sure you will never, ever chew gum before you go in again, right? But you can dissociate yourself from that. And as you say, visualizing it, just put distance on it. As soon as you distance yourself from something, it's no longer associated. Get the idea? So I'm trying to give you the kind of like the... The, the science of it all, but also the experience so that you feel it. Yeah? Amos has freezed it and the feelings. Absolutely. It just holds it in time. So the feelings can just be disappear. The event still happened, but you just don't get... Ugh. You don't get involved in it in the same way. Felt some same thing was... Um, something was unplugged from me. Yeah. Great. You can take out those things that are no longer useful. Remove them from your experience. So, anyone going to do this on a regular basis? Imagine if you did two minutes a day of this for the next week. What do you think would happen? You see what would happen is this. You would start to code your brain in a different way. Instead of searching for and looking for the negative experiences that are going on, your brain will start to see, oh, those things are not good, and I won't be searching for those. I'll be searching for 
other things that are positive and beneficial. Okay, that's exactly the kind of thing that we're talking about there now. Um, what is going on here with these dogs? The postman's just arrived. <laughs> anyway, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is this. This is an exercise called You Are a Learner. Okay, this is something that's really, really cool. Hello, Siobhan, how are you doing? This is something I want you to just get, get excited about, the whole possibility of, you know, learning new things. Because when we do that, what happens is, you know, we can start to really enjoy things in a completely different way. Okay, and what I want us to do now is to have more of a, a good time. And so let's start with listening to a little bit of music and focusing in on something. And I'm going to prepare this here. I want to start playing this. And this is about discovering your ability to be a learner, something that you can use anytime you choose to go ahead and do that. Okay? Yeah? Now, First of all, I want you to imagine that you can go back in time. Just imagine that you can go back in time now. And you achieve these fantastic learning experiences when you were a child. Go back to that time when you knew you were a fantastic, you had these fantastic learning accomplishments. Pretend momentarily that you can go back in a time machine. You can go all the way back in time to when you were a young child, learning extraordinary things. Imagine you're going back to that incredibly happy time when you had that extraordinary ability to accelerate your learning at a thousand miles an hour. When you could really make those differences and make those changes happen. Get a glimpse of what it's like looking through the eyes of a child again and imagine you can look up and you can see the adults around you all these huge grown-ups these giants and you're this kind of little this ball of consciousness this extraordinary open delightful personality just looking and learning all these new things there's so much going on and notice that you're notice what your learning capabilities are that you're actively and passionately learning new skills. You're learning language. You're learning how to, 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 when you fall over, how to stand up again. You're learning 15 to 30 new words a day without even thinking about it. You're learning hundreds of the rules of grammar and you don't even know what they are, but you just know them. And that ability to learn remains inside you right here, right now. And now take a moment to appreciate the gifts that you have as a learner. You have 15 billion brain cells that together are twinkling with the circuitry of a thousand cities. Your ears can hear 1,600 different frequencies ranging from 20 to 20,000 cycles per second. Your eyes can detect a single photon of light. And the 800,000 fibers in each of your optic nerves transmit more information from 132 million rods and cones to your brain than the world's largest optical computer system. This is how amazing you are. Beginning to realize this now more and more as you begin to go further and deeper on this journey with me now. Your 206 bones and 656 muscles form a more functionally diverse system of capabilities than any known creature. And these and other tremendous abilities to function and learn can be applied in many different ways. And you can count all your capabilities. You can't count them. There are too many. This is all inherently available to you right here, right now, at the unconscious level. And you can bring this up into consciousness. 
And now I want you to form a single image, just one picture. When you picture your ability to learn, you can see these kinds of capabilities as a whole bright image of your human nervous system, a system of functional capabilities unrivaled in the known universe. If you ever doubt your own capability to achieve your mission, this image can pop up as a factual account of your gifts, turning that doubt that you had, that you used to have, into confidence. And just see that image there now. And feel that image more and more. And just let me know. How do you feel? when you focus on your capabilities and your abilities to be able to learn new things. How easy is it when you go into that learning state? If you ever want to do something different, you ever want to learn something new, just go into that learning state because that learning state will picture, that picture will pop into your mind whenever you want to learn something. So if you want to learn something new, Whatever it is, anything that you have, give me something you want to learn. What is the kind of things you want to learn? Do you want to get better at doing, using the NLP? Do you want to you know, get better at self-taping? Do you want to get better at auditioning? Do you want to learn more about whatever it is that's out there? How would you use your learning state capabilities now to be able to go into that moment whenever you want to and choose to at the unconscious level? When you choose something like this, what happens is you are then instantly going back into starting every experience from the position of humility. A position of amazement, a position of gratitude, and a position of joy and ex extraordinary. It's quite magical, like electrical impulses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dave feels empowered. Absolutely. So empowering, says Eamon. Absolutely. I love that. Magical, like electrical impulses. Unstoppable, and super confident. Exactly. These are the kind of things you see. If you, this is, I want you to use this as your baseline. Wake up every morning and just start with this position in mind. Think, how am I going to get curious about the day? Where am I going to move from now? Where, what am I going to learn today? How can I bring in new experiences, new feelings, new thoughts, new understandings? How can I, you know, master self-taping? How can I learn more about my relationships with, you know, other actors, with other casting, with casting people? What is it that I want to do? When you come from a position of learning, you come from a position of being excited, your whole mental state starts to explode. It gets more powerful. It becomes more engaged. Yeah, Amos says you'd be a positive force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. But that's you. If you think about it, all that I've done, right, all I have done is just played a bit of music and read a few words, but making you recognize something that's already going on inside you. Indra says that made him feel really confident. Imagine just going into that state before you did your next audition. Imagine what would happen if you did that before your next self-tape. Imagine what you could do with this. Now what we're going to do is another little thing. I'm just going to turn this light on here for a sec. Is that better? That's not too bad. I will sort this. I'm afraid I'm sitting in front of a mirror. Not a mirror, a window, guys. So I, I do get the reflections in my back. Yeah. Yeah, your head is feeling good. Exactly. Siobhan says, takes me back to when I learned how to ride a horse by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look to all the things you can do, and your head is feeling good now. Whenever you focus on, remember that thing, whatever you focus on increases. When you focus on the positivity, when you focus on these good feelings, when you focus on your learning state and your capabilities to improve and to get better at whatever you do and to learn new skills, when you focus on that, that's what happens. You generate it. You can't not. It's just the way the brain works. We have a thing which is known as the, um, the reticular activation system. 
Any of you guys followed that? Any of you know what that is? The reticular activation system is a really powerful part of the brain, which works in a wonderful way. You know when you're walking down the street and someone says, okay, let's say you want to go and buy yourself a new car, right? And someone says, the only car you can get is a, um, is, is a Toyota. You want to get a Toyota. And so you're walking down the street and every single car you, you keep seeing Toyotas everywhere. Of course, there's another Toyota. Wow, what's that? Bro, look, a Toyota. What kind of Toyota was that? It's another Toyota. You know that feeling? Does everyone know what I'm talking about? Right? Uh, let's say you're going in to buy a new dress. Ladies or whoever. No judgment to her. Right? Whatever. <laughs> if you want to buy a new dress and you say to yourself, I'm going to get something from, you know, I want to get a green dress from, you know, a shop I want to go to. Every shop you go into, your brain starts to sort for zzz, green dresses, zzz, green dress. Zzz, green dress and you find yourself you come outside and everywhere you see green dresses everyone seems to be wearing green do you understand what i mean by that right does it does everyone have you all had that experience that's known as your reticular activation system it is a system inside your brain that is automatically following what it is that you do in terms of your goal setting. When we set goals in this way, what we're doing is bringing your reticular activation system to start finding these opportunities everywhere, to start finding these kind of like, you know, new thoughts, new ideas, new confidences, new capabilities, new skills, absolutely everywhere that you look. And once you get involved in this, this is what happens. You cannot stop. It's just, it's just the way the brain works. And that's what will happen to your level of success. It will just go up when you focus more and more on success and creating successful experiences. When you move away from the negatives, using those exercises we were talking about earlier, the putting the music underneath it and making and the picture frame, making it stop, all that stuff, putting a frame around it. Those, when you hold those things, we start to recode the brain. So the brain goes, ah, I'm going to change gear now. Right, I get it. Okay, we're going to move from being a larder to being a Lamborghini. <laughs> Lamborghinis everywhere, guys. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> okay get the picture cool right now what we're going to do now is identify what makes an experience compelling what makes it compelling for you specifically that's the point of this one here today okay that's what we're going to be doing and it's really important that you focus a lot on this one again this is a very important thing but start to think about something you really want okay Arlene says yeah, I love that isn't that wonderful look at that I was brought back to the feeling of wonder at learning new things it was fun and exciting exactly what would it be like if you thought that acting was fun and exciting all the time what if you thought that self-taping was fun and exciting what if you thought that going on stage was fun and exciting okay get the picture right now this one what i want you to do first of all is think of a task that you that's that's really attractive and compelling to you this is this is this is it doesn't have to be fun to do in itself it's not like like a job or something like that but this is something that you find really rewarding something that really means something to you something that you think of as being super attractive right because our brains are attra attracted towards things we find that we we find attractive so let's use the brain let's use your reticular activation system to get attracted to the things that really mean things to you hint like acting work and good relationships with agents and self-taping get the idea don't tell anyone okay so you thought of that now when you think of it think of something that the rewards are so great that you really really want to do it okay and when you think about it you find it attractive and you find it compelling it's pulling you towards it's something that's something you find yeah that lights you up that really kind of moves you something that something that you really really want something that's so kind of invigorating and juicy okay 
And when you're experiencing being attractive, look at the image in your mind, the way that a movie director might look at that image in your mind. Imagine that you're a movie director looking at that image. What is it that you see? Notice the cinematic qualities of it, the set, the lighting, the sound. You get the idea, the whole thing. See this all so clearly that you can make a movie of it. One with rich, vivid detail. Make it three-dimensional. Listen for the sounds. Hear the words going on inside your brain. Feel the feelings that really make it incredibly attractive and compelling for you now. And as you have that, I want you to take that image for a moment and just step it to one side, just for a moment. And now what we need to do is think about something completely different, like popcorn. Like, what's your favorite popcorn? What kind of popcorn? Now, I'm just distracting you for the moment because I want you to think about something else, okay? So now we can move that one to one side. And now we're going to focus on what I call a neutral experience. This is something that is a bit... Think of something that you don't care about. You don't care about at all. Something that has nothing. You know, like a pencil. Or um, a remote control. You have no feeling about it. A piece of paper. Something like that. Now, when you have that, something that you don't care about, experience the feeling of not caring about it. Yeah. Whatever it is. Okay? And this time again, be like a movie director. Have a look at this thing you don't care about. And list the cinematic qualities of this image. What's it like for you, this pencil, paper cup, piece of paper? Boof. Like the French. Boof. Don't care about this. Boof. Okay. And now I want you to think about popcorn again. Think about something completely different, okay? Just something completely different, like popcorn. What's your favorite? Do you remember the sound of popcorn? That's the way good things are going to be coming your way. Popcorn. Like that. Okay. And what I want you to do now is to notice the differences between what you found very attractive and what you didn't care about. You see, our brains are designed to notice differences. And you need to compare things to appreciate the difference. Now, here are some of the differences that most people have. The very attractive, the one that you're compelled towards, that was brighter. The don't care was darker. The very attractive was in colour. The don't care was faded or black and white, greys. The very attractive was big and bold and close. The don't care was Smaller, further away. Yeah. The very attractive was located more in front. Here, in front of you. The don't care was off to the side. Off to the side. The very attractive had sounds or words. Perhaps exciting ones. Yeah, you can do it. You're great. Working out really well. Everything you're doing is fabulous. That kind of thing. And the don't care might be silent. Have nothing going on at all. Now make a, a list for you of the differences that you find between these two experiences. See, these are the elements that your individual brain uses to code experiences that are positive, uplifting, and attractive against those experiences that are dull, uninspiring, and boring. These are your keys to motivating yourself. And when you turn on the ignition, this is what will fire up.
And you begin to experience that. Okay. Now I want to move to something else that I wanted to do. Just a little thing as well. Then we'll come back over this and, and recap. What I want to do now is how to make your goals irresistible. Okay. And like we were saying, we're drawn towards what we find attractive. It fills our attention, directs our actions. It's something we like, we really want. We go after it, right? That's what we do. Now that you've made your dreams and desires into these achievable goals, you can make them so compelling that you'll be naturally drawn towards them. Okay? Remember, the goals that we did last week, we're only talking about the goals that have been through the goal achievement, the well-formed outcomes. Okay? Remember all that? I think I have that still somewhere on here. Is that it? Yeah, that was the well-formed goal questions and outcome questions and conditions. So choose your top three goals that you did using this, okay? What do you want specifically? How you know when you've achieved it? All of those, okay? Everything you did like that. Choose your top three goals. Choose your top three goals, okay? But one at a time. First of all, take one high priority goal from your list and begin by imagining the goal in your mind's eye and seeing yourself having already achieved it. You see yourself having already achieved it. Okay? Not something that you might happen, it might work out. It might, something you have already achieved. So for me, like the example I was giving to you last week, I am now, I see myself now working in the movie with Matt Damon, doing the rerun of, what was it called? The Last Duel. I can see Matt, there's me. I can see it there, it's visual, I can see it, it's moving, I've got all those qualities happening now inside my mind, and now I'm going to increase the size, I'm going to make it a movie. If it's still, make sure you turn it into a movie, because when you make it a movie inside your brain, what happens is it kicks in more of the cinematic qualities of excitement and compelling nature of kind of like all these dreams and goals and get everything gets moving kind of more juicy, right? When you have that moving now, increase the size and the brightness of those images. Make it bigger. So instead of it, you don't, it's not little Matt Damon and little Nick, it's whoosh, massive. Make it IMAX, whoosh, huge, big image. There's me and Matt, massive, great image. Have your big images now, huge images. Make it three dimensional. You can see all the way around it. You've got surround sound going on. I can hear, for example, I can hear, I can see myself in there with Matt. We're talking away, we're having a chat about this and that. And I'm playing my line, he's playing his line with me, and there's Ridley Scott's in the background, having all of this stuff happening now. It's all going on. I can hear all the other, I can hear the sound guys, I can hear the first assistant calling, yeah, turnover, action, sound, in comes the sound guy, says coming in, clapperboard, hear that going. Get the idea? Making this three-dimensional, fully alive. Feel that moving around. If you want to, you can increase the colour as long as the feelings increase. If you want to make it saturate it with colour, if that makes the feelings increase, if it doesn't, take it down. Make it just right, okay? You can add rich, exciting, upbeat music to your goal. Anything that you want to do to increase this now, you can hear strong, supportive, encouraging voices cheerleading you behind in terms of your goal now, behind all of that. Okay? That Feel that compelling nature of that goal, that you have already achieved that goal now? Okay, when you have that, do that with goal number two and then goal number three as well. We could do that after we finish the after we finish the uh, the session today. Okay, that is really cool. Now, how are you feeling now? Let me know. How are things in there? How are things down there, lads? How's it going? Pretty interesting, huh? Did you know you had all of that capability inside of you? How do you feel? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm just going to clean these. Can't see a thing now. There you go. What do you think, guys? How was that for you? Let me know. What did you experience? It was great. Good.
Do it until you drop. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you notice the difference between a very attractive experience and a dull, boring one? Yeah? Did you notice the difference? Did you notice the difference? Did you see the difference between this, this really exciting goal and something that's really dull? Because if you can make that one difference in your brain, everything you focus on, when you start to create your goals, taking them through the well-formed outcome, doing all of that process with this, you'll be unstoppable. Empowerment and momentum. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. Eamon's speechless. Oh, but well, that makes a change, Eamon. <laughs> Good. Going in the right direction. Absolutely. Excellent. Making it IMAX had a huge impact. Brilliant. Brilliant. Making it IMAX, making it three-dimensional, turning up the sound. Everything that you can do to imagine that you are the movie director. You can turn up anything. Turn up the sound. Turn up the volume. Turn up the, the feelings. <laughs> Arlene's off to the rap party. <laughs> She's already done it. She's already shot the movie. It's fantastic. She's won the Oscar now. Hey! Okay. Well done, Arlene. Fantastic. Yay! She's won the Oscar. Yay! Okay. This is it. A different electric feeling between the feeling. A fe electric feeling between the feelings. Excellent. Brian, that might be a difference that you need to look at in terms of the way that you code your goals. Look for that different electric feeling between the feelings. Get the idea? When you start to make that, you I hope you're beginning to get the idea that when you practice this, when you put this into practice, because practice makes progress, when you do this more and more, you remember when we were talking about the confidence competence loop? You all remember that? The competence confidence loop. When you start to apply these, you know, well-formed outcomes to the goal, right? Taking yourself, and I'll just run through that again, because some of you weren't there. I know Dave wasn't there, a couple of you weren't there. Let's just say, I'm going to do this real quick, okay? You need the outcome questions. What do you want specifically? What's your goal specifically going to be? Let's say it's specifically going to be, I want to be in that episode of Emmerdale Farm, okay? Right? Something like that. So, the goal has to be stated in the positive. I am now performing in this, if it's a part, even better. I am now playing the part of Dr. Johnson. <laughs> in, in uh, Emmerdale, Do Dr. Johnson in Emmerdale Farm. I'm now playing the doctor, Dr. Johnson in Emmerdale Farm. Maybe it helps do the accent. Probably does. Right? Goal stated in the positive. The goal is initiated and maintained by you. Okay? So you are the person who's actually actively involved in that. How will you know when you've achieved it? Next question. Because you'll, you'll have evidence for your goal. You'll, you'll know. You'll feel it. What will you see, hear, and feel? What we've just been talking about. Okay, when you start to see, hear, and feel these kind of feelings around your goals, then when you go into the audition, you're just going to be, you're going to be so fired up. You're just going to be, way. Hey, this is what I want to do. This is me. This is here. Here I am. Let's go. Okay, so what evidence will you have? What evidence will you have for goal fulfillment? I'll feel fantastic. I'll feel this sense of joy in my body. I'll feel the whole thing. When, where, and with whom specifically? The desired situation. So whichever goal that you're going through, you want to go through all of that. When is it? Let's say it's the Emmerdale Farm. When? It's next Thursday. Where? It's in the Emmerdale Farm studios. And with whom? With the casting director, Doreen Jones, or whoever it is, specifically. Get the person. Let's see this. I, I am now winning this part. Boom. Okay? The desired situation of your goal. And also... Very important. What effect will this change have on the rest of your life, work, and family? So that the goal is worthwhile and ecological. Okay? Absolutely. Andrea says, felt really excited at the prospect of cinematic values. Cin oh, oh, sorry, press the wrong button. There, yeah, right? The, 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 wrong, the, 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 the cinematic values helped. Brilliant. Even had a brass band playing. Fabulous. You can imagine one of the ones I use when I want to turn up the volume. I imagine I've got a huge gospel choir behind me. 
a massive gospel choir, and I'm at the Albert Hall. I've got 15,000 people behind me singing, Go Nick, yeah, it's okay, hallelujah. Right? You can do anything you want. Just imagine that's happening inside your brain. You think that's juicy? You think your brain's going to go, yes, I like this? Of course it is. Okay. I love it. I love it. Ali says she's off to the rap party. Yeah, that's great. So Siobhan said, being on the film set and the director, me saying it's a rap. So you're directing yourself in the movie even better, saying it's a rap. By the way, do you know where the word it's a rap comes from? Do you know where it's a rap comes from? You know, when you say you finish filming and someone goes, okay, that's it. Thanks, guys. It's a wrap. You can wrap the day or you can wrap the whole shoot, right? It's a wrap comes from the silent films. They used to have, you know, the big cameras like this. And that when they finished the filming, the camera, the, the, the film was only like 10 minutes long. Okay, that's all they could do. So when they would stop that, they would wind, reel, and print. That's where it's a wrap comes from. Wind, reel, and print. Isn't that great? I love that. It's been going for hundreds of years. Fantastic. Exactly. Lachlan. Oh, my. You heard the wind behind you. Brilliant. By the way, Lachlan, I don't know if you got my email. Lachlan sent me this fantastic video. It was such a cool video. Um, maybe we'll get it. Could you post it on, on, on Tam, something like that? It's so cool. I would recommend everyone to, f to do this video that Lachlan s sent me last week. It, it is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. Check it out. If you can, Lachlan, that would be brilliant. Ah, now she wants it now. I know. Yeah, exactly. So, guys, any questions? Anyone got any questions on anything that we did today? Anything you're unsure about? Anything you want more practice in? Anything you want more clarification on? But what I really want you to get today is that you need to well-formed goals and the outcomes, okay? And then the feeling that goes with it. This is so important, okay? So that it's something that's very attractive. When you're pulled towards something that's very attractive and very specific, the brain kicks into gear with the reticular activation system. Okay, it's so easy. Do it. Just do it. Just do it, boys. Just do it. Okay. Any questions? Anyone got any questions at all? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. Absolutely. Never fear rejection again. This was, it, it's a fantastic video. It is so, so good. Do have a look at this. I think I'm going to put it inside town because I think it's so useful. Um, and it's about how you can just get rid of the, all this crap that our brains give us about rejection. Eamon got a standing ovation. Well, I'm thrilled. Eamon, what can I say? Here you go again. <laughs> May all your dreams come true. May all your dreams come true. Sure they will. Okay. So, guys, any other questions? Anything there? We're going to be moving it on a bit more now. So on Wednesday, I'm going to take you through a couple of processes which are really, really powerful. One is called the New Behavior Generator. And the other one I'm not going to tell you about yet. My brain is full of crap. <laughs> yes. Well, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get rid of it. You can just dig in there and just start weeding it out. Start weeding out all the shite. Get rid of the shite and onions. That's what we have to do. Okay? We can do it. It's easy. You're going to do it. Do the horn sound. <laughs> this is just for Indra. <laughs> great. Absolutely great, guys. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Had a wonderful time. Um, any questions, drop me a line. Peacactors at me. Which one is it? That one. Peacactors at me.com or come over to the site. Uh, uh, the masterclass is still going ahead. I'm building on it. Don't worry. It is coming. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just jump on the on the site. Uh, it's in the email. If you didn't get it uh, before today, you can just click on there and come along and do that. You'll enjoy that. All right, guys. Um, really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, 
great to, to chat to you. I'll see you guys Wednesday. Bring your friends. See you soon, guys. Bless you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Siobhan. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. Fabulous. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Arlene. Beautiful. Thank you, Emily. Emily, remember, before we die. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. Been taking note. Excellent. Start preparing. Start getting yourself into gear, Melissa. This is the way you can start looking. Start choosing your goals that you want from the ones that we've been doing and start running them through this, okay, and moving uh, into the next thing. Okay. Cheers, guys. Thank you all so much. See you Wednesday. Take care. God bless. Look after yourselves. Cheers, Lachlan. Thanks a million, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.